Hello, welcome back to How to RPG. Uh, so today it's all about game master preparation. This is a work day, so uh, on this day uh, we're going to be doing some non-player characters. I'm going to give you a rundown on how to do that, and uh, I'm also, as well as that, I'm going to sort of suggest to you a couple of books. This is the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters. It actually has a, a quite a large chart in the back that uh, goes over various um, uh, ways of building an NPC, roll on a percentile chart, and then there's the, of course, the Game Master's book of non-player characters, and then the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide, which is first yet edition. There's a couple of other books as well that you could uh, use, but I thought I would highlight these for today. I'm going to put out a poll. Uh, that sort of gives me an idea of what people want to build today. This is... Mm, this is this is, this is is it, people. This is back to what we used to do with... Uh, Dungeon Master Preparation, Game Master Preparation, Building NPCs, okay? So uh, if you were hoping this was finally coming back, I can assure you it is, it's back and it's ready. So grab some food, some drink, make sure you are comfortable uh, because I'm going to be going through quite a lot of stuff and um, I would certainly appreciate your feedback um, in the chat, so feel free to do so, okay? So let's get stuck into this, shall we? Since um, that's why you're here. <clears throat> and I think I have everything ready to go. Hi, <coughs> hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today we're going to talk about game master preparation. This is a work day, okay? So for those of you who were hoping we would finally return to it, yes, we have. And uh, Game Master Preparation, this is going to be listed as uh, Lesson 2, Building Non-Player Characters. I want you to be able to build and make your own stuff. That's what this is all about, and that's what we're going to do today. So what is the overview for today? What are we actually going to be covering? Well, the overview is quick non-player characters, how to get them, uh, building non-player characters for yourself, making your um, NPC names, creating NPC motivations for those uh, characters that you develop, uh, developing your non-player character aspects, I'll go into more detail as to what that is, selecting your NPC appearance, constructing an NPC stat block, if you needed to do that, you may not need to do that at all, and then some miscellaneous recommendations, this is usually how I approach things, as always. As always. So, my objectives for today is explain how to build non-player characters for your role-playing game, demonstrate how to do this, so how do you actually do it, explain it, demonstrate how to actually build a non-player character, we'll do that, and then give you sort of some practice examples. That means there's an inter interactive aspect to this. Now, <laughs> I have a sponsor for this program now, World Anvil. Um, now, if you want to organize your stuff, World Anvil is a good way of doing it, particularly if you want to move away from having a formal uh, pen and pencil and normal physical folder or file. Uh, you can put it online, it is a website, it allows you to store everything that you create uh, there and uh, you can organise it and it has a lot of tools as well that allow you to do uh, various other things. I don't normally do sponsors, but I have talked with World Anvil a lot about their products and um, we have come to an agreement, and so I am. I'm gonna. F you're gonna find their uh, their uh, link to their website down in the description. They also have a YouTube channel. Okay, let's get into the nuts and bolts of quick non-player characters. How do we make that work? Where do we get it? The easiest way to craft a non-player character is to get someone else to make it for you in advance. Obviously. The Game Master book of non-player characters has hundreds of pages of ready-made non-player characters. I've done a review on this book, so if you want to go check that out, you can. There's also the Pathfinder's NPC Codex. It's full of pre-made non-player characters. Now, of course, they will have stat blocks attached to them, whereas the first book I talked about didn't. It's, it's not really got any stat blocks. There's very few, in fact. Um, the players... Play <clears throat> The Pathfinder's NPC Codex does have a stat block for first yet edition Pathfinder, the role-playing game. But it does have a lot of other stuff as well that you might find useful. Additionally, um, any published adventure has heaps of non-player characters that can be stolen or appropriated for your game. The internet is actually full of NPC generators that make non-player characters with a push of a button in, in seconds. There's a website called NPC Generator 
Now I wouldn't say that it's the best generator out there, but it certainly will do what you need it to do. The Game Master's book of random encounters, now that might sound strange, why am I talking about random encounters when we're talk talking about NPCs? The reason being is it has a percentile table in it, and it is full of um, ideas for constructing, not just the name, but what they're carrying, what their motivations, or what they want, uh, some different aspects around that, that NPC, and it's a 100 uh, table, so it's a percentile table, a true percentile table, there are 100 different options, so that's a really good resource if you want to get things done fairly quickly as well. And then of course the Game Master's book of non-player characters also has its own um, smaller tables, these are uh, D20 tables or 20-sided dice tables uh, for generating randomly your NPCs, so you could use that as well if you wanted to. So that's how you get your NPC or your non-player character put together reasonably quickly without too much fuss. Now when we're looking at non-player characters, there are hundreds if not thousands of different ideas that you can come up with. And the best way to start with a non-player character I find is to always start with the name. So naming your non-player character. How do we go about doing this? A non-player character's name is by far, I think, the most important step. Uh, when you can also get, <clears throat> uh, which you can also get like uh, an electronic name generator to do for you. You don't have to generate that name, okay? Even though it's the most important step, it's not like you need to uh, <laughs> go through your brain and try to pull out something that was going to fit. Because there's a website called Fantasy Name Generator, and I would suggest going and checking that out. It has names that cover lots of different um, nationalities, cultures, uh, it's, it's got a fantasy name generator there as well. It's not just fantasy names, it does everything under the sun. You can also uh, check out Donjon, the website. That's D-O-N-J-O-N. -N. Uh, it has got a fantasy name generator in it as well. It's probably not as advanced as the one I mentioned. Uh, fantasy name generator, that website, probably the best out there. But Donjon will do the, do the trick. The, <clears throat> the Master the Dungeon website. Master the Dungeon website also has a name generator under the resources tab. Okay, if you look at the top and find resources, you'll find there's a name generator. It does a pretty good job as well. Also, the Marcus Forge Games website. Marcus Forge web, um, Game website. This has a name generator in the generators section. So you just go up the top there, I believe, and it says generators, and you go to there, and it'll you'll find the name generator. There is not, nothing wrong with using standard names that you know or exotic names that people of people you've met or that you actually know of. Okay, it's perfectly fine to reuse use names from the real world. That's not an issue. Um, some some names will work better than others, but I'm sure you'll be able to figure that out. It's not difficult to make a list of non-player character names that you can use later on. And probably the most useful thing to do to do is not necessarily to make a whole lot of different. NPCs but just to have a list of names because that's usually your first port of call you don't know how complicated that NPC needs to be in the first place so if you if you just start with the name you've done most of the, the heavy lifting use the uh, the sample names offered in a role-playing game handbook uh, quite often you'll find when you're looking in a, uh, a role-playing game handbook that there will be a races or a species section or a class section or there'll be some set section in the book that allows you to build characters or create characters and it'll give you some name suggestions. This is going to be very useful so use them uh, when you need to. Also and remember when I say this the assumption is that these are only used by player characters but the game master can do, do the same thing. You can use this stuff as well. Popular culture names from books, comics, and movies. Any of these you can pull and use into uh, for your role-playing game. And then I'm going to refer you to Sly Flourish, the random name generator list. It's actually an article on the internet. It's on his website. It's not really a generator. It is essentially just Sly Flourish making up a list of names for himself that he's he's been sharing with the rest of the, um, the web. And uh, that will get you pretty much your name sorted out for your NPC. Our, ne our next port of call is going to be the non-player character motivation. When it comes to the non-player character motivations, a very important step 
and it depends on the importance of the non-player character as to how um, well defined the motivation needs to be or how um, instrumental it will be in your adventure of course. So the motivation of any non-player character is vital for portraying and interacting with the player's characters. If you can get that motivation figured out, it, it does a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of the role play aspect. Because the name is just presenting the NPC. So pull a very simple motivation from real life that you think will fit. Particularly if you're using an NPC that's something like uh, just a shopkeeper or uh, a merchant. Uh, who doesn't have like um, ulterior motives and isn't going to be an underlying NPC that is instrumental. In other words, you're not talking about the main villain. Okay. Motivation tables for villains and NPCs can also be found in most game master guides or books uh, for any role playing game. So if you look there, you'll usually find there's an NP section, and under the NPC section, you will usually find a whole lot, lot of different motivations for your villain because. It's the most um, desired and necessary tool for a game master or dungeon master. The Game Master's Book of Random Encounters by Jeff Ashworth has a table on page 239 to 244 with non-player character objectives and motivations. So if you wanted a whole lot of different ideas, there's a hundred of each of those right there. Um, the Game Master's Book of... Um, non-player characters rather than the random encounters book also has random tables scattered throughout that entire book that covers wants and needs for your non-player characters this can be anything from a commoner right through to a noble or a, a key um, npc in your uh, your adventure the pathfinder game mastery guide on page 94 has a long list of non-player character goals now these goals are not so much about a villain, but about um, very generic non-player characters um, that you might be able to fit in. So another very good tool, and um, if you have that book, then of course you're probably already using it. So that'll get your motivation sorted out, but you're still not finished. There's still a bit more to go. This is where the meat and potatoes of your character is. They're not vital, but they're still incredibly important, provided you wind up having to reuse the NPC. And that is your non-player character aspects. The depth of a non-player character is created by giving them a function within the world or the adventure you're running. Now, the function can sometimes be defined separately from the occupation. So you might be dealing with a, a blacksmith, that's their occupation, but their function might be to pass on information to the player characters if they require it. Or it might be to act as a foil, or it might be to be the main villain, or it might be to act as the patron or the quest giver. So function and occupation do separate. We also have things like personality traits. Now what, are they, what is their personality trait like? Do they have more than one? Do they have a few? Ideals, bonds, flaws... And then sometimes secrets. Sometimes you'll have a non-player character that has a secret that won't be easy to find out about, but it's there. And it might be tied or connected to the motivation for that character. You can go to D&D Speak, the website. It has a bunch of random tables for selecting or generating up to a hundred different personality traits, villainous character um, traits if you want a villain, uh, your NPC jobs or non-player character jobs, and other aspects. So if you were stuck and you didn't have enough ideas to fill in the gaps there, this website's free, you can access all of this. You also have the Game Mastery Book of Random Encounters. It has a table on page 239 to 244, and it has non-player character secrets and obstacles. And there are a hundred different in there. Of course, won't do any good unless you have the book. The Game Master's Book of Non-Player Characters rather than the Random Encounters book, but the Non-Player Character um, Game Master book has random tables on there as well. They are scattered throughout the entire thing, from uh, and it covers secrets and obstacles and other details for your non-player character. A very easy way to develop a non-player character and its aspects is by selecting a background from the player's handbook for Dungeons & Dragons 5e that fits your NPC. 
probably one of the strongest and most well-developed concepts in Dungeons & Dragons 5e is the player's handbook and the backgrounds. Because the backgrounds don't need to just be used by a player who's playing a character. They can be used by a dungeon master and you can roll randomly or select whatever you like from these. Pick the one you want and it could be personality traits, ideals, bonds and flaws as, as if the tables are presenting you with um, your, your range of options. You can modify them if they're not quite going to fit but it's a good way, it's a good starting point and you can do it quickly rather than sitting there for hours and hours mulling over what you're going to do next. You can also roll between one and six Rory's story cubes that assist in inspiring ideas for your non-player character and the aspects. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to use the, the different pictures on those cubes and each picture will define some aspect of the non-player character, whether that be a personality trait, an ideal, a bond, a flaw, whatever you want. So you could roll one, you could roll two, you can roll three, you could roll four. Now this idea was actually presented uh, in the actual game Rory's Story Cubes. You can get this thing online as a phone app. You can buy them um, from a store or online as well. They're not hard to get. And um, so it was presented there as part of the game. But the person who made it stand out for me is Sly Flourish, who did a video almost well, more than 10 years ago, I'd say, uh, talking about using Rory's Story Cubes to create non-player characters for his Dungeons & Dragons or his role-playing games. So I'm going to present that idea to you. The Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide on page uh, 94 to 99 has a huge list of non-player character rewards, secrets, occupations, personality characteristics, and backgrounds, all of which should cover a lot of the things you, that you need when you're building your NPC. Of course, it won't do you any good unless you actually have access to that book, but it is there, it's a good resource. Okay, we've dealt with the different aspects of your character, but we're not finished. We've still got to do some of the other hard work, and that is the non-player character's appearance. What does that character actually look like? Now this helps define only at surface level your non-player character. It's not vital, but it's very useful. If you don't have time to find a picture for a non-player character, then create one important physical characteristic that makes them stand out. That's just one, eye, uh, one thing that makes them stand out. It could be that they have a scar on their face. They might have a tattoo of a dragon on their arm, or any kind of tattoo. They may wear an eye patch. They may have a peg leg. I now seem to be going down the pirate um, route, but anything that would make them stand out, stand out in some way. They might have pink hair. Now if you go to D&D Speak, the website, it has a random table for selecting or generating up to 100 different physical traits for a non-player character. That's the physical traits or appearance for your non-player character. So I, yeah, this is free. You don't have to pay for it. You can go access it. It's there. If you have access to the internet, then you will find hundreds of non-player character portraits on Pinterest. But this can also be a bit of a trap. If you start using images from Pinterest, ArtStation, various other places, um, DeviantArt, it's, it winds up sucking away all of your time. Pathfinder and similar role-playing games have decks of what are called face cards that can also be used and are very useful, very helpful. But also like non-player character portraits that you find on the internet, you're going to find it difficult to find the perfect picture that fits your idea. So when you start using images for your NPCs, rather than creating your NPC first and then trying to find a picture on the internet to fit your NPC, take the image as the, as the character. Use the image to define what your character is going to be like. It's the fastest and easiest way to get around a lot of this. Uh, draw a picture of the non-player character might be an option. If you feel confident in your drawing skills, then give that a go. Um, now, you could also use artificial intelligence. Uh, Mid-Journey, the artificial intelligence software, can create an NPC or non-player character with just a few lines of text or text description, but it can also give you some very strange results. So you might have a couple of extra eyes, a couple of extra arms, it's not perfect. Um, artificial intelligence software and servers 
creating artwork, not necessarily um, going to do exactly what you want. <clears throat> Another alternative where you have far more control of actually creating the image of your um, non-player character, but if you have no real uh, artistic skill, or you feel you don't have any artistic skill, is Hero Forge, the, um, the miniature customization website. So if you want to make your own miniatures or customize them, you can do them here. And they have a lot of different options. It's very versatile. You can color the miniature, but you can then, once you've made it and it looks pretty much what you want, you can screen capture that image and you now have a picture of your NPC. It will, of course, look very um, digital and computer generated, but it's, um, it's one way of solving the problem of creating an image for an NPC if you really must have one. Okay. I guess at this point we need to talk about mathematics. <clears throat> and in the past I've talked quite in depth about mathematics. Um, so I'm going to say right now, there is no quick, easy way to build a non-player character for combat. So don't bother. Okay, really, there there is no easy, quick way. And because there is no easy, quick way, we need to look at alternatives. Almost all role-playing games have a creature or a monster book with generic stat blocks for commoners and, and for um, combat NPCs. So go and use those. Why not? You might as well. The, the Pathfinder NPC Codex has... It's got a whole lot of uh, stat blocks for non-player characters, designed specifically for that system, of course, but still really useful. So consider that as an option. Another option is you could go to um, Dole's House website. That is D-H-O-L-E, comma S, Dole's House website. It has a huge library full of free Call of Cthulhu non-player characters. I know what you're thinking, but I don't play Call of Cthulhu. But if you do play Call of Cthulhu, it's a resource that's out there. It's been available for a while, and I would highly recommend giving it a go. Uh, Donjon, the website, has a non-player character generator that also creates stat blocks for different game systems. It, you may find a bit of a struggle to find um, your particular game system, but it does do quite a few different game systems. And then, of course, if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, the Monster Manual for Dungeons & Dragons 5e has a bunch of general combatant stat blocks for NPCs in the back of the book, including a, a commoner. Um, you'll also find that Dungeons & Dragons 5e has sidekicks with fairly medium difficulty or complexity stat blocks there that you could use. Uh, this, this sort of stuff can usually be found on the internet for free uh, through the Unearthed Arcana, the document should be still around, or Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, or the Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit. You'll also find that um, the Pathfinder Beast Trees often have uh, a section for just very generic um, NPCs that you could use. If you want more complex stat blocks for your Dungeons & Dragons 5e, uh, so far I've only been able to find a website called RPG Tinker. And if I am able to find other websites in the future that uh, cover different systems, I will certainly do so and I will let you know about them. But those are all the things that I could currently um, pull out of, uh, out of my hat for today. Now with everything that I do with these programs, I always try to uh, give you some recommendations, some miscellaneous recommendations when it comes to your game. And that is... I would suggest a combination of all the methods and techniques that I have suggested can help when you are struggling to make your non-player character. If you don't get to use your non-player character, then just save it for another time. And for those of you who are running into the problem where your players decide to kill your NPCs, well, it is possible that a player or the player's characters will kill your non-player characters before you ever get a chance to do anything with them. And after you've spent all that time building them, it's not an investment that's wasted. Because if they never got a chance to actually communicate with that NPC, the chances are you can use that NPC again. Okay? So don't feel like it is, it's, it's lost uh, work. Because it's not lost work. The only time it's lost work is when you've actually had an interaction with the uh, player characters with your NPC for a while and then once you've uh, re revealed a lot of the information around that NPC and built it up and then they decide to kill it. Then 
you might find like that wasn't quite what I was hoping for. Um, but that's probably the best way to look at it is uh, approach it with the concept that NPCs potentially are always going to be a target for murder hobos. So I just want to say thank you for watching my video. I do appreciate it. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, let's just go right back here and we'll go into chat. I, uh, I can't see anybody in chat right now because I was looking at my notes. Um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> today was probably one of those days where because I've done all that work in the past week or so, um, going through and just rebuilding everything, everybody assumed, I would imagine, that they weren't going to get to do very much of anything. And unfortunately, that's not true. Um, the intention was to run the program as normal. How's it going, Don? How are you? Um, yeah, it's a good day. I feel like it's doing, we're doing all right. So it w this is going to work a lot better if there were more people here. So here we got, let's have a look at this poll that people have been responding to. We've only got five votes, which is a shame. Uh, what do you want to make today for your role-playing game? Do you want to make non-player character tools and tables? 40%. Um, a specific NPC? Both. If there is time. 40%. Uh, so 20% want to make a specific NPC. 40% want to do both. And 40% want to just do the NPC tables and tools. Okay. And then no idea. It got zero. Okay. So it's, that's not a lot of feedback. But I think what that means is we've, we've, it's clear to me that people want the tools. So people want both, and then there's a vote for the tools. So what we'll do is we'll start with the tools. <clears throat> will we start with the tools or will we make an NPC first? I think what we'll do is we'll make an NPC first. How about we make an NPC first fairly quickly, and then we'll start the, doing the tools. So I'm going to have a cutoff period for this. Um, I'm going to have a cutoff period that it, uh, in, an, in an half an hour, if I've not finished the specific NPC, we're starting on the tools. Okay? And we can come back to this... Um, if we need to, don't worry. So it's not it's not lost. Okay, all right. Uh, now I'll remind you that the best way to support me on uh, is on Patreon. Um, if you want to really support me, then watching the videos and the live streams is great. But Patreon is where I will send all of this material, everything I presented today, including all the links to everything, will go into a document and it'll go on to Patreon. And I'll try to make sure I do that this coming Friday for me in New Zealand. Okay. Um, and I'll try to do that each week. Since I haven't really been releasing these notes or this information um, to Patreon in a document form, I'll start doing that. All right. So, <clears throat> get some dice, people. You're going to need some dice. I'm probably going to need some dice. Uh, and uh, we'll, um, we'll line ourselves up. I'll make sure I get this set up in such a way that we can do this properly. I'm going to use, I think at this point, I'm going to use... What do I want to use? I want to use this book. I know it. We're going to use the Game Master's book of random encounters. This one here. This has got a very large table. Allows uh, for quite a few options. And so we'll, we'll use that one uh, for today. So let's just make sure I get that in the, in the right position. And I think, I think that's right. Move that out of the way. Uh, you should be able to see that there, and I will transition over in a second. What I will do is I will make sure I create a, um, a just a very quick template for our non-player character so that we can put it together fairly quickly, and we'll go copy this, and we will create, uh, where is it, down to Google Docs, into Google Docs. Uh, Bam, stick that there, paste, and then this is hashtags, two hashtags should indicate what it is, and that's that. Cool. Gosh, we haven't done this for so long. It's been ages, ages, like such a long time. I kind of have missed doing this. With all the time I've been sick and all the time that I've spent on holiday and plus all the rebuilding 
it's been it's been a, a bit of a drag i have to say it's it's nice to finally be back to doing what we used to do and um and we will absolutely so this is i'm just getting my phone ready because i'm going to use my phone a little bit as well along the along the way just to make it a little bit easier for me to get everything done and that's it so i'm going to create a name a uh, hashtag do i want to punch it into the phone or when i punch it into the hair probably i can punch it into here so i'm going to bring you over to um, the book that i'm working from right here and that is that's that's what i wanted cool right so i'm showing you the book rather than showing you the google doc today okay and uh, what i want you to do is we're going to start with a name and then once we've done the name um we're going to move on and oh, what was the other thing i wanted to do there was something i was specifically ah that's right i've actually set this up so i can do this with a different a different lineup ah there we go that's probably a bit more helpful. Let's do this. There you go. You can still see me now. Okay, I'm, I'm still here. I'm not gone. So you've got my face. You've got the book. We're all ready. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take that idea and we're going to... Where is this? Um, come on. Lots of different little things to push here. So create a name. Hashtag. Create an NPC name so that's your first task now while you're deciding what you're going to do i am going to grab my dice which are miles away apparently there we go there it is and i'll get some percentile dice and then we'll roll and we'll do this now if you can think of a name great if you don't want to create the name hashtag roll on the percentile hashtag roll percentile dice there we go come on percentile percent percent percentile okay there we go there are your choices roll a percentile or just create a name and we'll go from there okay um, I'll grab my percentile dice, got them ready, and we come up with a name. I don't have anybody putting it, if somebody comes up with a name before I start rolling dice, then that's cool, we'll use that. So our first name, first letter of the uh, name, or first, first name, and then the second name we'll do after. I've rolled uh, 29. 29, what does 29 give us? 29, if I move this will give us the following uh, 29 is Hadley Hadley so we'll use Hadley for our uh, our character Hadley yep that's Hadley uh, I've got Gadley here how do I manage to get Gadley we want Hadley Hadley it is so we've got Hadley uh, our next Next task is we're going to do the the surname for the NPC. Unless if somebody comes up with an NPC surname, we'll do that. And I came up with, uh, that's a 78. A 78, yep. So let's have a look at 78 on our table. 78. And we're going to use Gans... Ganserbright? Ganserbright. Cool, blimey, what a name. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Ganserbright. G -g -g Ganserbright. Um, Ganserbright, okay. Ganserbright, got that. All right, so that was, that was pretty easy. Um, we can go with a brief description. So... What I'm going to do is there's another table on this in this book that has appearance. And um, since nobody's rolling dice, so it looks like I'll be rolling all these dice, but that's fine. We'll do the appearance. <clears throat> um, rolling, say, percentile again. And this is just a six. 
two zeros on that dice, uh, so that's a six. So six gives us, with a plug nose and lots of freckles, lot with a pug nose and lots of freckle, freckles. So there's there's our description, fill in on our little um, template. Uh, pug nose and freckles. Huh. Yeah. And lots of freckles. Doesn't really stand out a lot yet, but that's what we've got. Moving on. So we've done appearance. Wants and needs. So wants and needs in this book is really representing motivation. Okay, wants and needs is really um, indicating motivation. So unless people are going to roll some dice, I'll just do the rolling of the dice for you. And what do we got here? We've got 37. A 30 and a 7, 37, 37. And we're looking at wants and needs, which is essentially the same as motivation. Okay. 37, where are we? 37 is who just wants to own their own pastry shop. Okay, I feel like we've just, we, we're heading into, <laughs> what are we heading into here? <laughs> who just wants to own their own pastry shop? It is, it's that one there. I'll transfer that over. That's our motivation. Uh, wants to own <laughs> their own, wants to own a pastry shop. That's all we need to say. Pastry shop. So they don't have the pastry shop yet, but they do want to get it. All right, so there's our function we'll deal with a little bit later. <clears throat> Let's do um, secrets and obstacles. Secrets and obstacles, I mean essentially secrets and obstacles may well be um, another aspect of uh, your your motivation, right? It might be more motivation stuff, but it might fall into some other category. So we'll we'll look at what that's going to be in a second. <clears throat> so with our secrets and obstacles, let's see what we get. And uh, I got let's well, two zeros and a two, so that's two. I got two. That's not very much. Didn't roll that, that big a number. So what have we got under secrets? And is an utter coward. And is an utter coward. So that's their secret. So what we could probably do with that secret is use it as a flaw for the character. Okay. So we'll use it as our flaw. Um, is a coward. That's fine. Um, we actually do have a, sec um, a section here under under secrets on my little template, so maybe I will put it under secrets actually, now that I think about it, is a coward. So we'll put that there. Right, so we've almost built the vast majority of our NPC without too much trouble. Now if you want your NPC to have like equipment on them and things that they're carrying, then we can do that. I'll just add in a separate section for that right now. Or personal items. Personal items are kind of handy when um, players decide that they want to uh, rob them <laughs> or they want to loot their body once they have killed them. Um, so even if your NPC and all the work you put into it disappears down the down the, the gurgler, at least you use them as a way of, uh, of dropping treasure. <laughs> let's, let's, let's look at it in a positive sense, right? Okay, so uh, if you have dice, percentile dice, feel free to roll. And uh, if you have your pet polyhedral dice close by, let's do this. Okay, I'm rolling for now since nobody else is. This is 56. 
So we're looking for 56, and this is under equipment. 56, da da da, where are we? 56. 56 is in here somewhere. 56, there it is. 56, so it gives us a breakdown of our copper pieces, our silver pieces, our gold pieces, and a set of woodworking tools. All right, sweet. Let's let's uh, let's see how that looks. Um, we'll put that in, and I'll add those items. So four copper pieces. Uh, we have three silver pieces. Whoops! Whoops! Did I just know pieces? Apparently, I can't spell silver pieces. And we have two gold pieces. Um, a set of woodwork woodworkers tools. So, I think right now those woodworkers tools would wood workers tools that almost immediately means that we can kind of fill in the the uh, the function or purpose of our um, our NPC let's just use that as okay that's that's our indicator so the function or occupation the function might be different so we'll separate that and I'll put an occupation as well occupation occupation and that is going to be um, let's make them a carpenter carpenter since they've got woodworking um, tools they're probably a carpenter right let's make it that okay so you've seen we've built a, a quite a lot from just this book in terms of our NPC yep what else can we use that I've talked about already uh, with regard to this can we pull something from somewhere else to build the rest of our NPC yes we can the question is whether you want to use an existing book that you have or whether we want to use something that's completely free and that you don't don't have to worry about purchasing okay there was a um, I believe it is a D&D speak now I was talking about how D&D Speak, the website, has a bunch of random tables for selecting or generating up to a hundred different personality traits, villainous characteristics, NPC jobs, and other aspects. So what I'll do is I'll show you that website because I think it's a good resource for you to go and check out. Okay, and D&D Speak, And uh, we'll uh, point you in that direction in a second when I figure out what I'm doing. Dendy Speak homepage. Here we go. This is the one I want. And let me just shuffle over to a different screen so you can see what I'm looking at. And if I can find it, where is it? Properties. Okay. So switching over, this is Dendy Speak, people. This is the, the website I was talking about. So at the top you'll find there are DM tools, there are random generators, um, just generators, you have um, pocket dungeons, you have the, the D100 lists. D100 lists is probably where we want to go. So just fall on down, go to NPCs, you should find them under there. Uh, so you've got 100 goblin tribes, 100... Um, halfling personality traits we haven't decided what race this um, npc is so we could do that if we wanted to we could give them a race if you wanted to i'll add that in as a, another consideration um where will i put it we'll put it down here species or race we don't need to fill that out if we don't want to we can but we don't have to do that yep uh, thieves skilled quests uh, 10 reasons now we're looking for the one that says personality traits here we go 100 NPC personality traits this is completely free it was updated in January um, uh, last year so or they made it then so we could roll a um, on the percentile chart 
and just select one of these NPC personality traits if he wanted to. So what we'll do is we'll give that a go. Since it's there, we might as well give it a go, right? Um, I'm going to roll some dice since nobody else seems to be. And I got uh, 78. So what does 78 say? 78 says this NPC tries to give the PC advice in the form of sayings from his home country. Sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't. So we could take that personality trait and transfer it over. 78 is this one here. I wonder if I can copy and paste it. It would be good if I could copy. And can I paste the personality trait over? Um, and without formatting. Okay. What we'll do is we'll give it a number, because often you want to have more than one. You don't have to have more than one personality trait, but it's, sometimes it's nice to do so. So we'll do that. And I'll just under, underline and bold that. There we go. Done. Sweet. Right, so that's done. Personality trait. Now if we wanted another personality trait, we could just go back to that table and do the same thing again. What I'm going to suggest we do is we use a different book. And this, this time I'm going to use the book that I often wind up using for a lot of this stuff. Rather than showing you, I mean, I can show you the Pathfinder book that I've been using um, for generating this stuff. But the problem with my Pathfinder book is it's a pocket ed edition. And the pocket ed edition, unfortunately, it's just a bit too small. And uh, you just won't be able to see it on the screen, uh, which is a shame because it actually does a pretty good job with giving you, you know, uh, about 50 different goals and there's you know, close to that and, and background, NPC backgrounds and physical characteristics. I mean, they did a really good job with physical characteristics. Um, personality traits are here. There's not as many as you might like, but um, it's still a hundred. It's still, there's, there's still a lot of them. Uh, so um, actually, let's just use that one. There's a hundred there. If you can't see it clearly, um, I apologize. Um, we'll just use it because it's there. I've opened the page up anyway. So this is the, the book here, and you can see it goes over to the other page. So we, we need to roll percentile dice to make this one work. So since nobody's rolling, I'll do the rolling, and uh, we'll see where we go. We'll come, come up with something. All right, so I rolled a, oh, there's a 91. 91. So we'll pick out what's 91 on in this book. Core blimey, can I see it? Okay, very jealous, possessive uh, about particular object or person. Tends to view others as rivals and treat them as such. Okay, so that's a little bit of information to transfer over, so we'll, we'll do that, that's fine, we can do that. So that's that one there. And so nice and easy, personality trait, we'll just add that one in. So we've got two now. Um, <clears throat> so, very jealous, very jealous, uh, specifically we had here, jealous and possessive of a What's that specific item going to be? I guess that's the that's the key, right? What is that what is that ob object or item going to be? So very jealous and possessive of a well, what would it be? Um, of a I don't know. I guess let's make it a hat. I can't think of anything else. Is it a hat? Carpenters aren't really possessive of hats, though, are they? Carpenters are very possessive of tools, though. Oh my gosh, can I? Of, of. Okay, very just and very possessive of wood worker tools. That works. <laughs> that that makes sense, doesn't it? Um. Okay. Now the other one I'm going to separate is a different one. Uh, treats 
others as a rival. And I think that pretty much covers our personality traits. Right there. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so you'll notice that there are a bunch of other things in this, this book here. Like, there's a lot of secrets here. There's a lot of rewards. Um, they've done a pretty good job of coming up with ideas, even for um, NPC names. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this book out with another book, and we'll we'll do the last last little bit. Now I often um, use this book uh, for a lot of my NPC creation just because it's just convenient. Because, frankly, it has pretty much everything in, the, in in it, in one place. It's one of the the greatest things I think about this particular player's handbook is the fact they put everything in essentially one place. And that makes a huge difference when you're creating stuff. So if we go to the background section, I just need a drink of water. And we're going to be finished very, very quickly. We don't get a hundred options, of course. But what we do is we decide our NPC that we're currently building, what sort of NPC is it? What does it fall under? How can this work? And then you pick the background that would fit it. So what's the most appropriate background for this character based on what we've done so far? Okay. They want to own a pastry shop. They're currently a carpenter. Um, <clears throat> uh, they're cowardly. They have pug nose, lots of freckles. They've got woodworkers' um, tools. And <clears throat> they've got obviously some issues. They treat others as rivals. They're very jealous and possessive of woodworking tools. And, uh, yeah, apparently they give uh, different sayings um, out, pass out different sayings about their home country. So we've, we've got plenty. Of, this, this feels like a fairly natural. This is, doesn't seem any kind of like anything um, radical in any way. So I think what we're dealing with here is an artisan. artisan. So just turn to the page that has the artisan. Entertainer. <clears throat> Guild artisan. Probably the easiest one to, to, to work with. Let's just deal with that one for now. So Guild Artisan. Uh, we don't need to worry about the Guild business. Okay. We just, we're not going to roll for it because we already kind of established what they do. <clears throat> We've already established they are a carpenter. So you could have rolled on this rather than doing it the other way that I, I, I showed you. But we don't need to do the personality traits because we've already done them. But we've got ideals, bonds, and flaws. And that's just roll a d6. So what I'm going to suggest is for those of you who do have a d6 handy, roll some six-sided dice. So hashtag roll a d6 for um, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Super simple. <clears throat> Gets almost most of your NPC uh, down and, and ready to go. Yep. So if you roll some dice, um, I will uh, put them in. Otherwise, if people don't roll, I will just roll them myself. That's fine. I'm going to have a drink of water for a second. <clears throat> Everybody's very quiet today. <clears throat> um, I'm kind of curious. Have I, <laughs> have I scared everybody? Did I scare everybody away? How did that happen? Okay, so we're, I'm not seeing any numbers coming through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll, roll a six-sided dice. Unless somebody else wants to do so, um, I might as well do it myself. Okay. All right, I rolled a four. Four is greed, ideal. I'm only in it for a few, for the money. So I'm only in it for the money. Greed. That's our ideal. I'm only in it for the money. Okay, done. That was easy enough. That wasn't hard at all. And I'll bold and underline that little section. <clears throat> Next one, my bond. My bond is a six-sided dice as well, so we'll do that. Pardon me. 
roll six sided dice. I roll the four again. Oh gosh. Um, I pursue wealth to secure someone's love. Okay. I pursue. Kind of fits in with the other one quite nicely. Now, if you decide that you don't like what you've rolled, don't roll, just select from the options. Okay. And if it doesn't work, but it, something gives you an idea that moves in the right direction, that's what you want to try to do. Yep. Uh, so I pursue wealth. Why am I having trouble with this? That, that writing is so far away I can't see it. It's too small. Okay, I pursue. Pursue wealth. <clears throat> I pursue wealth. Uh, to secure the love of of um, I guess who 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 love of somebody somebody nobody got any ideas I pursue wealth to skew the love of a local local let's just put that um, and we will bold and underline this and then our floor and at that point we will be moving on to making tools so one more dice roll and that's a two um, I'm quick to assume that someone is trying to cheat me okay so that's a flaw that's a pretty good flaw kind of thick and works I'm quick to assume yep assume that someone is trying to cheat me core cool, blimey okay there we go and we've got it down so that that pretty much gets most of what we needed done um, and it's just a matter of uh, I'll flick you over to my document that I'm working on and uh, see if I can just do that no that's what I want no that's not what I want no that's not what I want this is what I want ah there we go so I will just scroll this down a little bit so I'm a bit bigger so you can see there we go and let me just show you what I've got here um, we've got our secrets we've got our floors we've got our bond we've got our appearance and we've got our personal items we don't have a race like I, I, I don't have anything for a race so it could be anything under the sun. We've got our occupation. Do they have a specific function outside of this? It really, it's de it depends on you. It really does depend on what you want to do with this. Uh, we can make them um, provides information. Provides information if the players pay for it it and bribes so we've got an NPC you have to bribe now there's that that's the that's the NPC's function there we go that was nice and simple and we've got a name Hadley and we don't have a species so um, does anybody want to throw a species out there or a race that we could um, call them you let me know and I'll include it otherwise I won't <laughs> I guess this is the strangest live stream I've done in a long time there is literally nobody saying nothing in here um, I wonder did, did I if I scared people away has, has everything changed in a way that I have not I'm not aware of it's the strangest live stream I've had in like forever forever okay so this this is it we'll leave this I'm gonna put down in the chat now give me a race and uh, we'll see if people can come up with a race while I go take a break I'll come back and then we'll start doing the uh, the NPC tools um, Norok hello how's it going Norok I'll tell you man it's been a low lonely experience the only person who's um, um talked to me is Don 
and uh, I've just spent the, the last half hour doing a presentation and last half hour talking to myself and rolling dice because there was nobody else to do it. So Noroak is a patron and supports me on Patreon. And thank you uh, for showing up because I know you will talk to me, which is good. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. Cool, cool. So um, what I need is I need a uh, hashtag. I need a race for the NPC we made. Need a race. That's what I'm... Hello, Overboard. How are you doing? Overboard is also a patron and a moderator, actually. Um, how's it going, Joe? Here's a YouTube channel that deals with miniatures and dice and everything. So, yeah. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, and then... What we're going to do is we're going to build some tools when I come back from the break. But it's been an hour. I'm going to take... Um, a, like a half hour, not a half hour, like a five minute or less break, come back, and then we're into it, okay? So that's my intention, um, is we'll build some tools for, for today for making NPCs. Something that you can use, um, and it's just about deciding on what it is we want to make rather than anything else. All right, so let's go here, and I'll be back in five or less. Oh. oh, I see. That's interesting. Oh, hang on. No, I can't do this with the door open. I'm closed. I've got to close it. Uh, open it. That's too much. Ah. Uh, okay. And uh, it's like it's yeah, sliding in. Let me bring us back. I'm getting rid of the hat. Uh, uh, I'm throw it too far. Uh, yeah, okay, right, I'm back. You got um, cicadas going bananas out there. So, yeah, that hat we can go over there. <laughs> it's too warm for this. I need to be comfortable to make this work, so we're going to make this work. Drink. Now, I had said, do you want to make tools for NPCs? We're going to make tools for NPCs. The question is, what tool are we making? 
But let's get this name down first. Uh, Quickling, Skaven, Furbolg. Let me have a look uh, at... Skaven is a uh, Warhammer, isn't it? That's Games Workshop. Furbolg, Furbolg, the first one suggested. Furbolg looks to me like it is... It's a Dungeons and Dragons thing. Um, oh, here we go. This is interesting. Let me... I wonder if I can share this with you. I'm going to share this with you. This is... Um, this is me doing a quick search on the internet about Furbolg. Bam. Right, just like that. Furbolg. So, what exactly is a Furbolg? In medieval Irish myth, the Furbolg, also spelt Furbolg, or, and, fur, okay, are the fourth group of people to settle an island. They are descended from Munatar Nimid? An early group who abandoned Ireland and went to different parts of Europe. Oh, okay. Are Furvolg's cow people? Did did people actually type that in? Matt Mercer briefly described Furvolg as having... Oh, I see. All right. Cow people. <laughs> Squig. Yeah, we do, we do other systems as well. Um, you, you can. You can put anything in here. Remember, we do we do anything you want, anything, squig. Well, tell you what, we'll put furbolg in there, but we'll spell it differently. We'll spell it differently. The reason I want to spell it differently is it's it's now whatever we need it to be. Uh, B H O L G O L G. You, um, Agile Monk, you do not need to apologize for being late. Um, Agile Monk is also a patron. He supports me on Patreon. Um, just as Overboard and Noroak do. And he's a moderator as well. It's been a tough week. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear it's been a tough week. So we've got our NPC built. We spent about half an hour doing that, and it's now time to make some tools. So uh, before we start doing that, I need to get you to tell me exactly what tool we are going to make today people um, so I'm going to give you some options I'm going to go hashtag and let's do this hashtag um, what tools for NPCs so we're going to make a, a, a table of 100 items for whatever it is a 100 items on this so what's it going to be it can be anything such as uh, where was I um, we're not going to do names. Names is easy. Names is very, very easy. It can be personality traits. It could be ideals, bonds, flaws, secrets, motivations. We could do villain motivations if you really wanted to. Although I feel like that's kind of probably already kind of done. I believe there is at least a table out there that's kind of like that. Uh, motor. Motives. Motives. Did I get it? Motives. There we go. Personality. Uh, what was the other thing? Ah. Um, distinctive appearance or just appearance um, something special that sticks out so uh, distinctive appearance such as a mustache or a tattoo or whatever like that um, What else is there that I could add in here as possibilities that you... So we're not going to do all of them today because we can't. That's just... It's not going to be plausible. Uh, we can do occupation. We could do occupation. Um, occupation. Uh, what else can we put in here? 
is something that you might want to use. Um, thinking, 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 thinking. Oh, my niece is back. Uh, now, uh, secrets. We can put down secrets. That might be. I don't know if anybody's got any other ideas. Secrets. Secrets. Okay, let me just put this in here, and let's just see what you you guys are thinking. Okay, various types of innkeepers. So, various types of innkeepers is very specific. What I'm thinking about people is I'm thinking, let's build 100 items to fill in the gaps for whatever you're trying to make. So whatever NPC you're creating, how would you be able to go about doing that? And you're making it from, so what would what initially, what essentially needs to be done, you need to have a table of 100 personality traits, 100 ideals, or 100 bonds, or 100 flaws, and 100 secrets, and 100 motives, and 100 distinctive appearances, or 100 occupations, 100 secrets. Oh, I put secrets in there twice. I don't know why. Why do I put secrets in there twice? What else have you got here? Various or different types of guild masters. <clears throat> okay. Um, any NPC features and traits chart. Okay. You don't mind what it is. Okay, so let's... If I think back to everything that we've got, <clears throat> personality traits is actually easy to find because there's a website that already does that pretty well. They've, there's one already on personality traits you get 100 items it's a free website doesn't cost you a thing there's um, 150 npc physical traits there as well so physical traits may not be something that we need to worry too much about <coughs> um jobs there's 100 jobs that's easy easy to establish i mean we can make up our own chart and table at some point as well um 100 what is it that we are not going to have 100 of that you might want secrets you want to do secrets secrets might be the uh, might be the 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 go-to the the only the only reason i'm thinking not secrets straight off the bat is because there's 100 in the game master's um, book of random encounters but you have to go and pay for that that's that's the that's the hassle right <clears throat> Pathfinder only has 50, <clears throat> but we could do that. We, we, could, uh, we could go through and, and put down 100 items that are about secrets. <clears throat> Does anybody else here have any preference? Otherwise, <clears throat> at this present time, different types of guild masters I think if you'll find that D&D Speak has um, 100 different in, in, uh, in patrons, 100, I saw guild some there, something there already. So I think that's been done. Um, um, 100 more tavern patrons, villainous um, cam character traits. <clears throat> Do we want to do villain motives? Because villain motives are very different. Would quirks be traits? We could do quirks. We could do quirks. Quirks is fine. Quirks are... I mean, they can be all sorts of things, can't they? Really. Quirks can be all over the place. <clears throat> is that what we want to do? That's the, that's the question. Quirks... Quirks or traits or whatever. I mean, quirks is a type of trait, isn't it? Essentially. <clears throat> Secrets, quirks. It feels to me like people are sort of leaning in the direction of um, <clears throat> something like that. Uh, so I'm going to make up a document, get it started, while you guys are thinking. That is for what we're going to create. And I'll make a blank. Double hashtag. 
double hashtag just means that I need to make sure I turn it into a, um, when I do the Google document, into a, um, a patron document. Um, we could do motives in general, not just fill in ones, what drives them. Yes, we can do that. <clears throat> we can do just motives if you want. Okay. Uh, secrets, motives, they are kind of working together. Okay, let's have a go. So, um, non player character um, goals. Shiner wants goals. I like motives. Overboard likes motives. We well, looks like we're going with motives. Motives and goals are pretty much the same. The question is, do we want generic NPCs or do we want the main villain? That's that's what we really need to consider. Okay, is the NPC is it the main villain, or is it the NP just NPCs in general? Overboard likes mine. Okay, so um, can I do this? And I will uh, give it uh, the final final cue once I know what you guys want to do here. I'm gonna get rid of my dice because we won't need dice now. We're actually going to type some stuff up. You do like motives? Okay. Because one of the one of the things is that there is like a, a bunch of different things on various websites. So so it's it's I guess it's it's trying to make sure we don't duplicate stuff that we don't we already have access to, particularly when it's sort of free. That's all I was thinking. Motives of an NPC of importance. Okay, so we. I think what we. Uh, I think we're going down the the route of it's the villain. It, it seems to me that that's where we're going down. That we'll make it the villain. Okay, and given that we're dealing with the villain's goals and motives, I think we're going to have to fall back on. Uh, where was it? Goals, no, 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 goals, okay, NPC goals, there you've got 50 there, and then, okay, so that's interesting, I'll keep that book open for now, I'm going to just shuffle a few things out of the way, and I'm going to get started, doesn't have to be a villain only, uh, yeah, but I, I mean, we're we're either going for the villain, um, John, or we're going for just standard NPCs. And it seems to me that people are wanting to go with an NPC of importance. Um, so it, it seems to me like we're talking about the villain, as far as I can tell. Okie dokies, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Um, because when it comes to villain motives, there aren't that many good ones out there. I hate hate to say it. It's, it's just true. Schemes, methods, villainous stuff, villainous options, villainous schemes, yeah. Okay, let's do this. So I'm going to give you this book here as sort of a guide for where we're heading. And it may, may be useful, maybe not. Mm. Will I do that? No, I'm going to give you the main page that we're working on. That's what I'll do. <clears throat> so we're working on this, and I'm going to call it Non-Player Character Villain Motives. And we'll do general motives some of the night and day if you like. Not a problem. We can do that. And I do this. And I bold that. And uh, we need to just get started now, don't we? All right, let's move this across. Um, there we go. Here we are. We're over. This is it here. So non-player character villain motives. That's what we'll work on. And... Um, to make things a little bit easier for myself, I will go here, and we will start. So, hashtag uh, NP, NPC villain 
motives. Whoops. I have not spelled that right. Motives. That's the one. You like the miscellaneous NPCs? Motives of a town jester. Jester. Okay. <laughs> let's do. Let's do the main. Let's do the the villains. The villain one, and then we will do the. I mean, otherwise we're going to have to make a decision. We're going to have to do both of them at some point. Let's just do both of them. We'll start with this one. I've already written this up. Let's let's do this. So we want villain motives. Um, what are they going to be? And uh, we probably need to put them into alphabetical order a little bit. So. So. Um, What would it be? Seeking, seeking, acquiring, seeking a magical legendary, legendary um, item. Now, What's what's the worst thing you could do? Is it seeking a magical, literary magic item to pr prolong their life, or um, item is probably more around. Oh, it could be anything. Let's do that one for now. That's a pretty standard thing. Like this, you seek out this thing. Really, that's like Sauron, isn't it? I'm going to chuck these into uh, alphabetical order as we go. Um, um, so what would it uh, become a god maybe they were trying to become a god that's their motive um, transform into a god every villain wants to transform into a god do they not uh, you can have a um, evil scheme gesture trying to poison the king ah um, so poison, kill the king, kill the king or queen, the king or queen, um, kill the, what is it, it is the it's something else. I wanted to say something else. I want to kill we can, killing um, king and queen is a good example, but uh, kill the the monarchy. Kill the um something something. Oh look, I'll do that for now. That's what I'll put in there for now. I can't <laughs> I can't think of what else to say. I was trying to figure out, but kill the king and the queen. Um, but poisoning that'll do it. Let's go cut. Paste it, kill king or queen. What is uh, next on here? Ah, okay, that's uh, that, okay. We could do that. Yeah, they seek to control magic. Seek to control all magic in the world. Let's do that one. Yep, absolutely. Let's make sure I put this in about the same place. Uh, cut and paste. Sweet. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, cruelty. Ah, okay. This is really a person who just wants to destroy the world. Um, okay. Okay. Um, force others to suffer. As they have, is this pretty much what you're talking about? Well, maybe that's not. Maybe it's just force others to suffer. That's what we're trying to go for. And I think go cut, and I'll put it there. A lot of jumping around here. Okay, got it. Um, seek to destroy the existence of magic. Okay. Um, so that's control all magic in the world, but, so you want another seek, you want to say seek, I mean we can put seek in, 
Uh, that's the, um, the BHAG motive. <laughs> now you have to work um, work down from there. <laughs> yeah, from there. Yeah. Um, let's just go destroy. Destroy the existence of magic. Okay, we got one. That's another one down. Well done, people. Uh, they want to help overthrow the government. Ah, okay. Overthrow, overthrow. Overthrow the government with a coup. Oh, I can't even. I can't even spell it right now. Coup. Coup could he do do overthrow overthrow. Uh, got it. It's in. Um, want to eliminate a specific region? Okay, so really we're talking about destroying something. Uh, destroy. Destroy or burn, I guess. Destroy a nation. Or part of the world. Uh, okay, so that's sort of... Right. To destroy a nation... nation, a region, or the world. There's always somebody who wants to burn the world, or the world. So let's get that in there. Okay, got it. Um, indulgence. I don't understand. The word indulgence alone doesn't give me enough. You, 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 people, you, you need to give me like a, a short sentence. Motivations that just says indulgence, what does that mean? It doesn't, there's no, at least we've got an, enough there, there's a couple of words to give you an idea of what's going on. So take indulgence, what, unravel it a little bit. Okay, destroy a specific religion is better. Yes, that's good. Okay, cool, cool. Want, want to uh, our uh, um, guild master so they can be promoted to the role? To what? I I'm lost, oust. Okay. <laughs> um, um, oust. Oust a guild. Guild master. Uh, so they are promoted to the role. Yes. Let's put that in. And I go cut and I'll stick it down here. Paste it. Okay, cool. Got that. Next. Uh, they seek to prevent the death of a loved one at all costs. Okay, so let's go with trying to prevent the death of a family member whoops or loved one got it um, secretly run a torch chamber for profit and <laughs> right. prevent prevent um, what are we going to put here run okay I guess it's operate a um, torture cham chamber for profit. I think that's what you were trying to say there, um, John. Yeah. Um, want to keep their identity hidden. Okay, operate a torture chamber for profit while... Remaining. 
anonymous in in uh, in God, it's anonymous. It's not really okay. Okay, something like that. Got it. Um, I want to have a key leader on the on the military killed off in in a form that won't get them caught. Okay, so so they're promoted. So this is another promoted idea. So um, uh, kill. Kill the queen. Kill king, queen. What was the other one? Military leader. Um, I'm going to go here. Be promoted to a position of power that they desire okay I've got that destroy a specific religion yes we'll put that in a specific religion come on here we go. Got it. Um, they seek vengeance on church or God that um, prosecuted them. Okay. Yep. That's sort of playing into the idea that John was saying. So we'll, we'll keep that. That's cool. Eat. Eat. Um, here's a truly evil one. They seek to turn the world into an anime. Okay. I'm not putting that down. Yeah, funny. Yeah, funny. <laughs> um, rule over the seas to hold power over all ships of goods and trade. <laughs> um, I guess that's become a pirate king. Uh -huh. King of all seas and oceans. <laughs> okay, I got it. Okay, Shine has got his ideas sorted out now. Indulgence, going after every whim and fancy at the detriment of the um, country's coffers. Um, Mary, a ton of figure. I do not understand. I think I know what you're trying to get at. Um, what's another word for that? It, essentially, it's um. Oh, what is it? What is it? It's in my head, but it's not quite there. Um, yeah, this is going to be hard for me. Okay, here, I think I got it. I think I got what you're trying to get at. Live off the kingdom and or nation. At its expense. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's what you are after. Establish a plot to make the king's advisor look as if he or she's been working for the enemy so they can output their own personal as an advisor. Um, so we're talking about framing somebody, aren't we? Frame a, an important... Political advisor advisor 
with um, hang on, Pfizer as incomp incompetent. I think that's what you're after. I think I got it, John. Runs. What do you mean runs? Do you mean they've got the runs, like the, the going to the toilet runs, um, Joe? <laughs> um, they seek to conquer for the sake of it, but are never satisfied. Incompetent. Um, Do we have something like that already? Dominate, dominate, dominate. Mm. Rule or dominate the world. That's um, that's really that's it's really ruling, isn't it? That's what we're now talking about. Rule the world. Or dominate the world. Whoops. Uh, so we got that. Dominate the world. Got it. Rule or dominate the world. Um, uh, raise, what is this? Raise all the dead they can to build an army to, to rule. Okay, so. Create an army of From dead. Through necromancy. <laughs> there we go. And then of course the some of these will, will 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 fit with others. So I think you've got the, the necromancy idea and raise the, the dead. So we've got that one. Um, they seek to turn all of the halflings into good sources of food. That's eat. Eat all the members of a specific species or race. Weird. Got it though. <laughs> I'm not going to call out halflings specifically. Every race deserves to be eaten completely. Um, they seek to eradicate homeless, but quite literally. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> right, I get, I understand. Erad. Eradicate all the homeless. Homeless. Um, so, mm, do I need to be any more specific than that? Eradicate all the homeless. I'll leave that for now. We'll come back to it. Shh, what do you got, Shrana One? Um, is basically saying that they are on the take and stealing from the people. Ah! Stealing from the nation's co uh, um, coffers. That is actually nice and easy to figure out. Thank you. Stealing from the uh, kingdom or nation's coffers. Got it. It's in. It's done. Um... What is it? It's basically saying that they are taking, they are taking, stealing from the people, from the people, feed their own desires instead of using the coffers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm I think I got what you, you're trying to say. Or oh, are you talking about the Robin Hood um, syndrome? A villain that steals from the rich to give to the poor. Give, 
go to the poor. That's um. Personal gain. Um, I think I covered that both now. There you go. Done. Your your sense of humour is hilarious. Okay, I got it. Okay, yeah. Well, um, in a dark way, yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, we'll put it under operate. And under underground guild. Um, crime syndicate. I guess we can put that in. I got it. I think I got it. Ah, okay. Um, let's drag. Is it send, seek, destroy? It's not. It's something else. Um, okay, force. Force the world into hell. I think I got that. That's it. It's in. Doing good. Um, we eat species equally here in the community. Exactly, um, John. <clears throat> there are there are no no discriminating. Um, you must eat everybody equally. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, they want to bring the um, eldritch horrors into the world in order to observe, to observe and research them. Oh, summon! You're talking about summoning, aren't you? Summon demons, devils, and eldritch. Eld. Rich horrors into the world to research. Really good idea. <laughs> Got it. It's um. Um. Which one? They are stealing from. People for themselves, the people for themselves. I'm lost. Yeah, 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 yeah I got lost. I, I tried to, st I tried to follow that, and I, I, and I really, I got lost. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, pff, yes, I really got lost for that one. <laughs> what else have we got here? Come up with um, a potion that everyone will love, uh, but it has small traces of mind control agent that over time makes everyone a permanent slave. Ah, okay. Um, let's do... Turn everyone into a slave. <laughs> I think that's um, through mind control. Um, okay, I got that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. Establish and operate a Cosa... What's this? A Cosa Nostra. Mafia. Establish and operate. Um, okay. Um, 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 um. What about pineapple? Uh, mafia. 
I'll just add that in. Crime syndicate, mafia, it's the same sort of thing. Um, we've got that there. I think you wanted to have the word establish a crime syndicate, mafia. So we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll make that separate. Uh, copy. E for establish, establish, establish. Whoops. Establish a crime syndicate mafia. Got it. That's in. It's done. Um, they seek to re, uh, recreate the world in their twisted image. Oh, okay. Uh, trying to trans... Actually, I'm just going to say transform. That's really what we're trying to do here, is just transform. So let's do that. Transform the world into a twisted nightmare, basically. <laughs> I think that's what we're after. Would I be right? Um, they know reading this list might start another um, satanic panic. <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh dear. They constantly, they are constantly experimenting with um, s sewing different animals and humanoids together to create a perfect being. Okay, so this is experimenting. Good. Let's do that. Experimenting on. Um, animals and humanoids to create the perfect being very good we know we know what that is that's um it's frankenstein isn't it frankenstein nice nice now we need to start thinking about all of the um, Pinky and the Brain episodes. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> Pinky and the Brain, yeah. Uh, and I, I agree, Pinky and the Brain is a good place to go with this. It's not, not a bad way at all. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to come back to that page because I'm going to pull apart a lot of the stuff um, when I get a chance. But you guys have done a really good job of coming up with ideas. Um, so that is 30 ideas. We only need 70 more. We're probably not going to have time to do all of them today, which is a shame. But we, the next time we roll around and we're doing Nod Player characters, we will continue on this table until we have 100 items. Not 50, not 20, not 30 not 15, not 10, not 12, but a hundred different items that are motives and things that your villains could get up to. And hopefully I don't have too many repeats um, in there when we put this all together. But yes, um, I'll make a special note here, down here, pinky in the brain. Think. Pinky and the brain. Brain or Brian? <laughs> One of those. Okay. Ah. Um, sell weapons of war. That's really what we're talking about. And uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, sell, sell, sell. Weapons of war. Profit. That's always a nice one. That's a that's a very real world, <laughs> common one, dear. <laughs> oh dear. Um, they drain the blood of all the children they can find and try to create a a potion of everlasting life. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, good lord. Um, this one here. <laughs> drain the. Blood of children to make to make what is it? Potion 
of everlasting life. Okay. They have a wager with another evildoer to see who can bankrupt more holy people. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is going to be the last one. Um, um, so what do you call it, Norak? When, when two people are, they, it's a bet. It's a bet, isn't it? It's a wager. A wager or a bet. Um, let's go wager. A wager to corrupt. A wager to corrupt um, holy people. People or holy or good people. Let's do that. Holy or good people or good. There we go. That's that's a very evil thing to do. Let's put that in there. I think that will do quite nicely. Oh, they want to make everybody happy. They don't know what happiness is. Uh, okay, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna stop there. Otherwise, we're gonna keep going and going and going and going, which is what tends to happen when we get started. You guys have done a really good job. Uh, um, there have been some heavy lifting going on here. I can see you've done a fabulous job. I have to say, very very impressed. So that means we've only got um, you know just under seventy more to go, which is great. <laughs> Uh, it's probably what we should have started with, but in, in any case, it, it doesn't matter. It's all it's all right. It's it's all cool. Um, things things will work out in the end. <laughs> it will get done, um, and uh, when it is done, it'll probably wind up being one of the those resources that you can't find anywhere else. So let's uh, end this poll, and. <laughs> Uh, no, it's fine to be dark. It's it's fine to be dark. Um, I, I I get it because we, we are trying to deal with may, really you know horrible threats. Villains need to have horrible things that they are trying to achieve. Um, they were they they were definitely perfect. How's it going, F Hubba? How are you doing? Got here late. Uh, late notification. Thanks, uh, YouTube. Yeah, that's 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 YouTube for you. You have plenty of lag here to do the replay. Use the comment section if you need to add in some stuff. That's not not a problem. Okay, I'm happy for you to do that. So so we we're gonna um, cycle out of here. I just want to thank um, people now and uh, and get on with my day. <laughs> and we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing creating homebrew monster lore. That's right. It, it's a short one because we're actually going to create some homebrew tools for your monster lore. We we're going to do that. It's going to happen. Okay. Anyway, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons who support me on Patreon. I do appreciate it. It really does make a big difference. I want to thank uh, World Anvil, which you can find in the des description, a link to them, for supporting this, uh, this live stream as well. Uh, <laughs> and I want to thank everybody who took part in the poll. And specifically, I want to call out everybody who actually provided ideas and talked to me in the chat uh, as we were doing this today because it really did help make things a lot easier for me to get things moving and I do appreciate it and so I want to call out specifically Noroak, thank you very much, Shiner81, uh, I want to say thank you to Overboard, um, Agile Monk and if, was there anybody else that I've left out that had been providing ideas through this live stream, if I've forgotten your name um, I do apologise I do appreciate you assisting me in this whole thing because otherwise it would not be as much fun. It really wouldn't. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been watching the replays of my live streams, my edited videos, putting up with those um, those short videos. And uh, hey, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee or early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.